Today I want to talk about uh, failing forward, failing to success, and why failure is an integral part of us being successful. In my work, I often, um, when I'm interacting with students, I find that probably the biggest thing that holds them back is fear of failure and recriminations about I'm being a failure and they always want to be a success. And I think a lot of this goes back to early days in school whereby, you know, uh, exams are fairly easy and you tend to get high results. And if you weren't getting high results, you tend to feel bad. And this starts very early in life. And then as you get older in school and college and so on, it gets hard to get those high results. And of course, outside of school and college, there's so many arbitrary factors involved in success. And the reality is in life, we have to deal with failure. And the interesting thing is the only way we can be successful is through failure. So how can we fail forward and make the most of things? So I'll just share a couple of concepts with you here. Okay, there's a nice uh, book called Outlayers, the, uh, the Story of Success by Malcolm Gladwell it came out in 2008. It's one of these kind of populist kind of books about you know, kind of pop psychology. You can't take any of these sort of books too seriously in the sense that the uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle regarding electrons in an atom says that you can either know the position of the atom or the speed and velocity of the atom, but you can't know both together. Uh, it becomes impossible to see. Well, the same when we look at, say, pop psychology books, you can either be populistic or you can be accurate. You can't be, you can't be both. And I don't mean that to knock the book, but the simple fact that if you go deep into being accurate and technical with psychology, you'll lose the mass audience. And if you go into the mass audience, you have to lose some accuracy. So always remember that when we're looking at these populist psychology books or anthropology books or books about life, which hit the bestseller list, they're always going to take a, a grandiose view, an overgeneralized view, but they can also, also often have some very good points. And the really good point that he has is an idea called the 10,000 hour rule. And it's a suggestion that it takes 10,000 hours to master a craft, okay? Now, of course, he just I, I pulled it out of his ass, basically, because there's no way of saying it's going to take 10,000 hours to master something, but it's a good principle to think about. Let's say we take a look at, say, IQ, for example. Okay, so we have here the bell curve. As we see here, the majority of people, 85 to 115 is average IQ, and you both, you know, kind of you're starting to be above, intelligence, above normal intelligence, 115, really high intelligence, 130, and 145 genius. Uh, below 85, you're a bit of a dumbass. Below 70, you're really not doing well. Below 55, you're technically regarded as, as retarded. What's more interesting is we look at the percentages here. Basically, 34 and 34, 68% of the population is average. Who is a genius is 0.1%, okay? That's like one in a thousand. Who is retarded is again one in a thousand. Who is below average is 14%. Who's above average is 14%. Who's really high reaching is 2%. And who's really low reaching, 2%. Now, the reason why I'm giving you the example of the bell curve is you can find this curve is, is in nature everywhere, okay? So anything. So forget the bell curve for a second for IQ. Just think of any kind of curve. Again, we have a very similar, this is a bell curve defined, right? Okay, see any kind of bell curve. It's very high in the middle and very low at the ends. And what that's really telling you is that there's going to be people who are going to achieve things easier and people are going to achieve things harder. So if you go back to this bell curve here, I forget to say IQ score. Let's just think of aptitude score. Let's say you want to be a business person and you are average. If you go by... Malcolm Gladwell's idea, around 10,000 hours, about 2,000 hours is a working year. So 10,000 hours is five working years to master that. So if we just don't take it too seriously, but just think as a principle, let's say it takes the average person five years of full-time effort to become a good entrepreneur. That's five years of trying out different businesses, not just going to school or college, but actually in the field doing something, whether in school or college or time or not. Now, if you're a really talented person that may be two and a hundred people, that 5,000 hours, that 10,000 hours might be 5,000 hours. If you're a super genius business person that one in a thousand people, you might find that you're just straight out of the block, just with, with literally know with like 10 hours training, 10 hours experience, your first business is a success because you've got such a high aptitude for entrepreneurial success. You just boom, off you go. 
By the same token, if you're a bit of a dumbass, that 10,000 euros might be 20,000 euros. And if you're kind of retarded uh, financially, it might take you like 20 or 30 years of endless effort to eventually make some success in business. Just look around, you look at people that you know who could never make a success of the business, they're probably more down here. And other people just walk out and they want to go to business. We can also put that in things like say maths or physics, for example, you have to become a physicist. The skills that's going to require you is probably five years full-time work in the field, not just a degree, but actually working as a physicist before you get really good at it. And of course, you're going to have the odd super genius type who's going to be straight out of the bat. They're going to be, you know, top of the class, come out with all sorts of amazing achievements very quickly. Uh, and of course, it's going to be other people. You're going to have to struggle. It's going to take you, instead of five years, it's going to take you maybe 10 years to start really finding your feet as a physicist. If we say, for example, a sports person or a musician, the same thing. Somebody can learn the guitar to be a really good guitarist in, in five years. Somebody else is going to take 10 years. Somebody's going to take two years. Okay, if we look at, say, rock guitarists, for example, they usually take a guitar 13 or 14, and a lot of them are really good by 17 or 18. They're probably going to at least practice a lot and very good aptitude. But some people take longer. So what's the point of this? I'm saying there, what's the point of showing this? The point of saying is that if we take as a rule of thumb, that takes the average person 10,000 hours to do something. And we don't take it too seriously. It could be 8,000, 12,000, et cetera. And there's an aptitude. It's going to vary what your aptitude. It's going to take you some time to get good at what you want to do in life. Okay? It's going to take you some time to become a financial success. It's going to take you some time to become a professional success. It's going to just take some time to get the physique that you want, to become the sports person, the musician, or the actor that you want. It's going to take some time to get good at relationships. It's going to take you some time to balance your life. And... What people are getting wrong with this failure thing is they want to come out straight out of the gates and be super successful. As we look at the graph here, we see the only super successful people, there's maybe one person in a thousand in any field you can think of, is going to like, boom, just get it like that. Most people are not going to do it. And the problem with our society these days, we have so much social media blasting us all the time, but different messages and showing us super talented people, super beautiful people, it's very easy to compare ourselves with them. So, and also you have to remember that those influencers and people that we're looking up to, you know, they're giving us a doctored image. They're giving us a PR uh, image. Uh, just look at documentaries, uh, look at interviews. Often they, they take people who are successful and put them in a super positive light and gloss over the hard work, okay? Like the, the new actor who's just arrived on the scene is only 28 years of age, but they've been acting for 14 years, but nobody ever asked about the 14 years, always only new. Well, it took them 14 years to get to where they are now today. So the point is, if you look at success stories and people are successful, it tends to take time to get there. And you're going to fail forward. If you think about, um, I like to talk in this channel to some degree about the law of attraction, uh, not the all over the place, you know, it's going to solve everything. You're going to have a sports car and uh, all sorts of sexy parkers and stuff. Uh, not that overblown one, but the practical side of that whatever we think about, feel about, and visualize regularly will come about. If we immerse ourselves in this, if we really put efforts into what it is we want to pursue, uh, we are immersing ourselves into this uh, these activities, and we're trying our best, not just to learn it, but to do it. You don't have to become a successful business person. Not just you have to do an MBA, you have to start businesses. You want to become a successful writer, you must publish books, even if they're crap. We become a professional actor, you must act, and even if it's for free, and even if it's rubbish. Um, you want to uh, get good at romantic relationships, you have to start talking to people in, in, in interacting with people romantically. So whatever it is in life you want to be a success, I would think of the law of attraction, we have to be using repetitive thoughts, visualizations and feelings, and that they're helping program our subconscious mind to help us. But we have to get stuck in there, learn our craft, whatever it is we want to get good at, and fail forward. We need to be okay with failing. Because how else can we be good? How many people can speak in public for the first time and speak well? How many people can, you know, their first business is super successful or their first date is the best thing ever? It happens, but it happens rarely. And if your standards are, I must be the best of the best all the time. It's going to make their life difficult. And remember, when we look at people who are interviewed on TV, when we look at social influencers, et cetera, they're giving us a kind of doctorate image, a larger than life image, which doesn't really show their real challenges. And of course, there are some people who are very high functioning as well, who are just naturally very good at things. So before you give up on, uh, 
on whatever you want to achieve, we have to realize we're going to fail forward. So actually the best way forward of learning to fail into success is to start with the idea that I am going to be this great success. No matter what, I am going to be the success. Okay? And you don't worry about the journey. You don't worry if it's going to take you two months or five years or 10 years. I am going to continue forward and I'm going to look at all my activities as if my activities, like we take this idea of in Zen Buddhism, the other side of like practice. I'm mastering my craft at multiple levels my relationships, my exercise routine, my social life my professional life, uh, whatever my aspirations are, I'm working on improving them. I'm being honest about it. I'm reality checking and I'm working towards self-improvement. And I don't worry about the failure, okay? We always, that famous story of uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Sanders knocking so many banks, people won't give along to this old guy and eventually somebody did and eventually got a success. We must start by seizing the success and realizing that the failures are just steps towards success. Just like a kid can't walk without falling on their face, same thing, we have to think about failures. And we have to realize it takes time to master our abilities and we have to keep working forward. And so we have to remove that idea from our head that I'm a failure and instead realize that I'm failing towards success. My failures are paving the way to me to be in success because my failures are teaching me what not to do. That old, that old quote from Edison, whether it's true or not, they said, I didn't fail a thousand times. I, you know, 999 times I worked out how to not do it. That's the attitude. Seize the success, believe you're gonna be successful whatever endeavor you're after, and just do a lot of action and try and learn from your mistakes. And you can overcome failure. And failure is a key aspect. If you're not failing quick enough, you're doing something wrong. You must be failing if you want to be successful. Failure is just a flip side of success. Hope you like this video. If you do, please like and subscribe. I'll talk to you next time.